This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, August 13th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. While the big news yesterday afternoon was that the Capitol newspaper is going to be moving out of their Annapolis location, the Capitol has had a presence in the city of Annapolis for more than 100 years. Now, details are still coming in, but from what we understand, Tribune Publishing, who owns the Capitol, has decided to close the Capitol office as well as the Carroll County Times in a cost-saving effort due to COVID-19. This story was first broke by Pamela Wood here locally, and she said in a tweet, Now we're told that the company is permanently shutting down our CapGas News office in Annapolis and our CCT News office in Westminster. That was later confirmed by local reporter Danielle All, who just said, We just got the news the Capitol will no longer have a permanent physical location in Annapolis. Brooks DuBose also came in, and it's true, we will no longer have a physical location in Annapolis for the first time in more than a century. And he put a link in there for SaveMarylandNewspapers.org. And what that is, that is an effort to have the Baltimore Sun and the subsidiaries purchased by some local owners that would run it as a nonprofit. Currently, the Tribune and the Sun is not for sale, and the concern really lies with the addition of Alden Global Capital, which is a hedge fund. They acquired a 32% share in Tribune Publishing, as well as three seats on the corporate board. Alden does have a reputation for downsizing and gutting local newsrooms, so everybody is probably worried with good cause. In addition, we do understand that the Orlando Sentinel, the Allentown Morning Call, as well as the New York Daily News also will be shuttering their offices. Now, I do want to emphasize that the Capitol is still publishing. Reporters will still report. Advertisers will still advertise. The newspaper will still be thrown on or near your driveway every morning. You will still get a daily update. You will still be able to read it online and everything else. Nothing is changing other than they are not having a physical location here in Annapolis. And it should be pointed out that the reporters have all been working remotely since the start of COVID. And Tribune Publishing did say that they do not anticipate getting back into the office until sometime into 2021. I can see where it makes financial sense, but it still seems that one of America's oldest papers to not have a home in one of America's oldest capital cities is just wrong. Hey, Annapolis got a present the other day. I don't know whether it was UPS or whatever, but somebody dropped off 40,000 medical grade face masks. And when they looked into it, they found out that it was from Changsha, China. Now, Changsha was a sister city, which was a program that was established under the first term of Mayor Ellen Moyer. So that's really languished for about 20 years and three different mayors. But apparently, Changsha did not forget. The masks did arrive this month. The boxes featured American and Chinese flags with a message that said, Go City of Annapolis. Best wishes from Changsha. True unity inspires people to work as one to overcome adversity. And according to city manager David Gerald, these will be used to go to first responders as well as transportation and other employees that are exposed. So a big thank you to Shangsha and Annapolis Mayor Buckley did send them a book full of pictures of Annapolis. And finally, in more Annapolis news, the city has opened up their wallet to the tune of $429,700, and they are giving out community grants for this fiscal year. They've divided them up into three categories. One is organizations that provide services that sustain, empower youth, families, and individuals to move toward a better quality of life. Category two was organizations that provide programs that preserve and enhance a community's character. And category three was organizations that provide programs that are integral to community revitalization, economic development or environmental sustainability. In all, they had a request for $626,828 in grant funding. They were only able to accommodate $429,000. And some of the notable ones are in Category 1, which is services to sustain and empower youth families and individual, is the Restoration Community Development Corporation in Glen Burnie for $25,000 and the OIC of Anne Arundel County for $25,000. Very similar. What they do is they offer programs for youth and young adults, job training, pretty much life preparation. Also in that category are Lighthouse Shelter for $20,000 and Larry Griffin's We Care and Friends for $20,000. Category 2, which is the programs that enhance a community's character, that would be the Bates Legacy Center for $28,000. They were desperately in need of that, which is a good grant for them. And Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts for $20,000. 
Category three, organizations that provide programs that are integral to revitalization. You've got the Four Rivers Heritage Area for $28,000, the Annapolis Film Festival for $15,000, and the Newtown Community Development Corporation for $15,000. Now, I'm not quite sure why they did this, but they also had another category called City Services for $88,000. They gave $8,000 to Winter Relief Services, which is a budget item pretty much to help fund churches as we need to get homeless people off of the streets. And then another one for $80,000 to Housing Authority Inspection Services. And I'm not quite sure why this is not in the operating budget and it's treated as a grant, but that is where the city put the money to inspect public housing. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we will be updating these stories and more. If you are someplace you can leave a rating or a review, please do that and let your friends and family know how to get the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief delivered to their phone or tablet every morning at 7 a.m. It is Thursday, of course, so we do have Trevor with your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes. And as we have every day, George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. All of that is coming up in one minute. But here is Rick Peters from Solar Energy Services. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But While solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010, and it's been paid off for almost five years, and I no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years. If I waited for cheaper solar, I'd still be paying an electric bill. At Solar Energy Services, we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait. So what are you waiting for? Sunshine's a wasted. Call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, August 13th. Yesterday was a mess with flooding storms in the region during the late afternoon and evening hours, with a near repeat of significant flooding in Ellicott City and Catonsville, with an isolated area of damage and major flash flooding that did occur in between in Oella. And today will likely bring more heat and humidity with showers and storms as a frontal boundary gets hung up on the east coast, which will help skies stay unsettled each day through the weekend though temps should at least be a bit cooler Friday through Sunday. And the expectation for next week is for highs to be at or below normal on the whole as a high-pressure center should set up over the New England region, bringing a nice easterly or northeasterly flow of air into the area for several days, helping to break up the summer swelter. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMB Weather. Make it a great day out there. Stay healthy and be safe, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Store. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and use our website each day at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. When it comes to diamonds, there are two things that matter. Reputation and value. At Zachary's, you know our reputation. We pride ourselves on providing the best experience for every customer every day. Because we wouldn't be here without you. But what you might not know is that Zachary's is the only diamond importer in Annapolis. We cut a check for half a million dollars and deal directly with the De Beers site holder to bring you the best quality diamonds. That's just one step away from a mine. So by the time a diamond gets to your hands, only two people have touched it, not six. I'm Steve Samaras, and at Zachary's, we've spent decades cultivating relationships around the world to ensure we can offer the best value on a diamond. But the relationships we value most are the ones we create with our customers right here in town. Zachary's, online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. If it's a diamond, we're a good place to start. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Makers Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor with Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Saturday at Kittens and Cups, Annapolis's own little cat cafe off of Defense Highway, they're having an in-store per-made painting event where you can paint and hang out with kitties and relax a little. 
Also, if you want to support Kittens in Cups, be sure to check out their GoFundMe. Help them take care of the cats while COVID has everything on pause. Sunday, the Mid-Atlantic Antique Radio Club is having their August meeting via Zoom. After introductions, there'll be a pre-selected show and tell. If you're interested in antique radio equipment, these guys have some really neat stuff to show off. And if you're into butterflies, there are two great options in the area. Check out both the Butterfly House at Ladu Gardens in Moncton, Maryland, just north of Timonium, going on now through October, as well as Wings of Fancy Live Butterfly and Caterpillar Exhibit at Brookside Gardens in Wheaton, going on now through the end of September. Blended Essentials in Severna Park has more summer camps. Starting on Monday, check out their pirate-themed summer camp. They'll be making candles, soaps, bath bombs, lotions, and more. Wine and Design in Annapolis is offering more take-home kits this week. Check Check out Poppies, Ali Alpaca, Stepping Out, Whale Love, a do-it-yourself you choose painting, and Blue Bombshell take-home kits in virtual classes. Also check out their five-slot Bring Five Friends class tomorrow night. The Kid Museum in Bethesda has an encore of their Make It DIY workshop, Kid Robotics, with lessons like What is a Robot, Making Analog Robot Models, Program Your Grown-Up, Wiggle Bots, Robotic Arms, and Intro to Microbit, an inexpensive microcontroller that's fun to program. And if you're looking for streaming music, the Annapolis Streaming Facebook group, now just called Annapolis Music, has a bunch of fun streaming and live events. Tonight, check out another Live Art Maryland's Quarantiny concert. Tomorrow and Wednesday, check out Larry Lay, streaming first from Middleton Tavern, then from Brian Baru. On Saturday, check out Jimmy's Chicken Shack and their third live stream, this time from Jerome's studio in Baltimore. And Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday, check out the Spencer Joyce live streams. At Art Farm in Annapolis, summer camps are in session with another Fearless Girls photo camp, this time for advanced and returning campers starting next week, and with a graphic design camp following that. Also check out Art Farm's virtual classes with the virtual botanical drawing for beginners in full swing, a virtual beginner macrame class starting next week, along with a virtual first exposure digital photography class on Saturday. And also check out Art Farm's virtual art gallery with plenty of art for sale from local artists. At Maryland Hall, on Wednesday, check out an artsy evening out, a fun outdoor workshop at Maryland Hall. In this couple's workshop, learn about preserving mementos by decoupaging them into a bowl, frame, or box. Also keep an eye out for more of Maryland Hall summer camps for kids. Play Bakers in Annapolis has take-home pottery kits, as well as their Art Rages summer camp. Next week, it's great outdoors theme. All campers will create fun projects ranging from pottery painting, glass fusing, clay sculpting, tie-dye, wheel throwing, and more. At the Anne Arundel County Public Library System, check out their weekday Facebook Live story times for kids. Also, today, check out A Celebration of Differences, a children's book reading, and great discussion about how we are all different and all special. This particular event focuses on race and discusses how racial differences make the world more beautiful, teaching kids that differences are something to celebrate, not ridicule. Also today, check out the Braver Angels Skills Workshop, How to Talk Across the Political Divide. Braver Angels is a nationwide organization formed to unite red and blue Americans to depolarize our society. This free workshop will teach participants skills for having respectful conversations that clarify differences, search for common ground, and affirm their common humanity. Tomorrow, check out Anna Segro, an interactive storytelling, African drums and game. In this exciting family fun fair event, they'll use the technique of African storytelling to explore some favorite children's literature with lots of drumming, singing, and dancing. Also tomorrow, check out another great movies discussion, this time with a movie called Seconds, a film from 1966 about a man desperate to escape his life who succumbs to a mysterious organization that offers him a new identity and a fresh start, starring Rock Hudson and available through the library's access to Canopy with a K. On Tuesday, check out Juggling Funny Stories, award-winning family entertainer Chris Fasicone brings stories to life with his boundless energy, humor, and audience participation as he acts out children's books, becoming a multitude of hilarious characters. Also on Tuesday, check out the Virtual Anime and Manga Club, sharing the love of Japanese animation and comics online. Join fellow otaku and enjoy discussing your favorite anime and manga with others. On Wednesday, check out another Ready, Set, Kindergarten with the Eastport Annapolis Snack Library. Four family story times will use stories, songs, and games to help children, parents, and caregivers prepare for kindergarten in fall 2020. Also on Wednesday, there's another intro to library ebooks and streaming with plenty of things to keep you occupied and entertained, as well as another Guys Book Club with Jack London's classic Call of the Wild featuring exactly zero CGI dogs. And at Annapolis Makerspace this week, tonight, check out our bi-weekly open house and new member orientation night. If you want to see what the shop is like before deciding to join, tonight's a good night to drop by. Also, next Tuesday, we'll have our monthly CAD CAM and CNC with Autodesk Fusion 360 workshop. If you're interested in CNC or just 3D design in general, drop by and pick Russ's brains. You can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org. Whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. 
This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.